Dark the Imp and the Ogre. My name is Paul. This is Ryan. And today we are talking about The Created. The Created by Bruce Nesmith. Originally published in 1993. This is a second edition D&D adventure for 2 to 4 PC or level 2 to 4 PCs. And it is a Ravenloft setting adventure, which uh, is super fun. Yeah, this was a pretty fun adventure fun adventure to read um hints of pinocchio in this a bit but well, it, it, uh, it, it definitely is the the dark pinocchio yeah. to go with our dark charlie and the chocolate factory that we did a, a, a couple of uh, episodes ago yeah so our uh, giuseppe and his puppet figlio were pals the puppet turned bad and killed all the adults in the town and created a puppet army to hang out with children <laughs> um he ended up creating a demiplane of dread for himself in the in doing all this and got teleported to the realm of Ravenloft. He, he, or... he didn't create it himself. Right? Wow. It's, it's, it's the whole idea behind Ravenloft is that it you know, created the thing. You you end up creating domains that are mm. ruled over by some evil entity, and within these domains, they have control. Like like Ravenloft's kind of like a a demi plane that's mm -hmm. full of all of these little domains in there. And the classic being, you know, the original Ravenloft where you have uh Strahd von Zorovich and his Barovia being the sort of the original demi plane. Uh, but this is kind of interesting in that the PCs are actually in the town as it transitions from being just a town in the world to a domain of Ravenloft, and, and that was kind of neat, I, I, I thought. Yeah, very cool. Um, um, so yeah, once that, all that happens, you're stuck within the demiplane until you succeed or fail, basically. You gotta escape. Um, first impressions? I forgot how much I enjoyed second edition, how they divvied up into all these different settings, mm. and how different the different settings are. So in second edition, you got your your standard Forgotten Realms, which is basically the default setting that all fifth edition stuff is set in. I don't even know if they've released anything else. Maybe Eberron, maybe I can't remember. But you know, you had Forgotten Realms, you had Ravenloft, you had Al Alkadim, you had uh, Spelljammer, you had Dragonlance, and each of these settings. Uh, Dark Sun, uh, Dark Sun's awesome. Have these separate, unique rule sets mm -hmm. that you know it's it's D and D, but it's D and D with also these rules. Right? Right. Like Dark Sun was had tons of psionics, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Spelljammer, you have rules for flying through space, right? Like there, there's all that type of neat. And with Ravenloft, Ravenloft's the horror setting, so there's specific horror rules mm -hmm. associated with it. And reading through the adventure, it periodically calls for horror checks and what have you. Yeah. And, and it had been a while. I mean, literally been a while. It's been more than 20 years since I played a Ravenloft <laughs> game. Uh, so I went and dug up what the actual fear rules were. And I'm like, these are super cool. I'd forgotten how neat they are. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's basically a will check. And then there's a fear table. And the responses are all random. So there's random responses, and there can be penalties associated with it. So it's like a, you roll a 1d6, and then you can, but the results can be anywhere from like 1 to 10. So you can have stacking penalties effectively. So 1d6 plus 3 because of reasons, right? But I like that if you look at the tables, there's a huge uh, variety in outcomes, right? So it can be something as simple as you run and hide, and you, you know, you're terrified in fear. But it's also like you scream in terror, and, and, and you know you miss a turn but like to have a mechanic where you're trying to be all stealthy and you're sneaking in and then you see something scary and you scream well you just alerted the entire dungeon mm -hmm. of the monster you know that you're in there and from a gameplay mechanic i thought that was super neat and then it goes all the way up to the point where you can literally have a heart attack and die from <laughs> fright and i just thought that was cool to the point where i'm like i need to make note of this and maybe insert it into my games in general because they've kind of sanitized fear effects yeah. in later editions, right? You, you, you know, you can be terrified, you can just be shaken or, or what have you. I don't know what the terminology is in, in fifth edition if they've changed it or not. Yeah. But it's pretty boring, right? You cast a fear spell and then you miss a turn or you get a penalty to your attack rolls or maybe you run away, which is promoting consistency, which fair enough. 
but random tables with thematically interesting outcomes and not and most of them aren't like really painful it's you know you end up missing a turn or you are out of commission for like 10 minutes but how hilarious it is that like you can fail your role and then faint and you're unconscious for 10 minutes unless somebody like slaps you awake <laughs> right like i think that's a, a lot of fun and i i like optional rules like that that add what i would consider fun yeah i uh, had a note about the fear and horror mechanic as well and that it says you know if your players role play the scene effectively like they don't need the role but i would say like don't allow that to happen mm -hmm. just do the roles because um well the players aren't really their pcs so you can't you know mm -hmm. you're never going to be able to act like a dwarf or an elf but it's just like let it happen there's fun things with them and uh, yeah it's another like lost mechanic i guess that's pretty cool but also in really in, you know reward someone playing a paladin because if you're immune to fear and fear actually has some pretty disastrous mm -hmm. consequences uh it's a huge boon to the party if you know you have this stalwart fearless leader yep. who very presence bolsters your own fear saves right i think it just it, it, it's cool thematically yep. uh, mm -hmm. as well as mechanically so i did i did enjoy that uh, in regards to general impressions i did like the basic sort of conceit of the adventure i think it's fun right i mean ultimately the end goal is to get your PCs trapped into the bodies of dolls and then see if they can recover their original bodies, which is which is kind of a clever idea um, to do. I did find some of it maybe a little repetitive. I felt in places that it lacked guidance, right? It was maybe a little too freeform, and we can touch on those parts as we get to them. And then certain encounters, while very narratively cool, are super railroady, right? Like this is just going to happen like because the end encounter. The end encounter is super scripted, mm -hmm. very cool, you know, and will make for a really interesting narrated ending. But it does take a lot of the player agency away. Yeah, um, which. I find a bit problematic, but obviously different people's, you know, mileage will vary. Yeah. Um, you? Yeah, I thought I kind of same points. It felt really fun. Um, you know, you could maybe even avoid half the adventure if you don't get possessed for some reason. You know, if your party's very cautious and they never go, you know, yeah. unlikely, I think. Mm -hmm. But And, and um, I will say that it isn't assumed that they will get yeah. uh, possessed. And there are sort of details of what happens mm -hmm. you know how you can resolve it if you don't get possessed yeah i think like being dolls would be fun i think that part of the adventure would be like a very cool like oh my god we're dolls moment and then escaping that and then um yeah i felt the ending was very railed roady they kind of days ex machina it right like you're not going to fail it's you can't it, lose you the can't, last fight yeah. which is kind of you know, disappointing like once you get there you can't lose you're going to get out of the demi plane and the miss of raven loft will disappear and or miss of barovia will go away um so yeah i think that was kind of like give or take i think the adventure as a whole makes that okay to me mm -hmm. um so yeah, uh, yeah yeah i think you could tweak with things a little bit to eliminate some of that railroady aspect and really in, you know, improve on it but overall the decisions were made for the sake of fun mm -hmm. uh not sort of to be punitive yeah and i think that's fine you know it's like okay to have fun playing the mm -hmm. game and it's okay i think if the narrative leads it to have fun and i think maybe as well railroading is okay in that the end is the point that's railroaded it's not the entire adventure you're not yeah. given explicit places to be and yeah. what to do the entire time mm. and there's a lot of like yeah you might become dolls you might not you know that's not a mm. given and then having that script sort of scripted ending is fine by me given the whole picture yeah I, I agree it is just the mm. one component if the mm. entire adventure was as scripted as that for that last scene i'd be like this isn't yeah. really you might as no... well watch a movie exactly yeah. exactly um the hook of this adventure is very simple. You just need to be in a town where there's a festival, period. 
But you need to be an Odiari. <laughs> so yeah, you can use the town that they have written or you can just pick any place and effectively uh, it mentions if you have a player in your group that's more inclined to be charismatic and try to hit on men or women in the game to focus it towards them, but you get offered tickets to a puppet show. Um, and that's sort of the hook. Completely uh, unnecessary though. Yeah, because then there's the hook, which is um, the scene titled First Blood, I guess. Oh. And you stumble across uh, <laughs> a murder scene, basically, when when you show up, you are uh, immediately deputized by the local militia. And um, I, I so dislike this kind of hook. And, and in hindsight, I should have complained about it more when we did, um, what was the one we just did not, Mad God's Key. But the, the showing up at a crime scene and then everybody being like, Oh, you strangers look qualified to investigate <laughs> this. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're your murder hobos. You probably got blood spatters on you. Like realistically, if random armed strangers show up at a crime scene, they're suspects. Exactly. 100%. <clears throat> they, they should, you know, the, the bumbling local, you know, shouldn't be, Hey, you guys should totally look into this, problem because it's above my pay grade so you look qualified random people i've never seen before right so <laughs> yeah I, I made a specific point regarding that like if you're going to use this hook the players need some sort of credibility mm -hmm. or reputation or kind of relationship with the law enforcement in the city already they could be members of the town militia if you're starting right. Like if this is your first adventure, make it the make them the militia members, right? Yeah. Or make them part of the constabulary, constabulary, uh, or what have you. Otherwise, my recommendation would be that for your first level adventure, do something that would earn them favor with the town, make them known to the town, right? Just something that gives them some reputation so when they show up they can be hey great bob mm. joe mary you're here we could really use some expertise yeah because it's crazy in there <laughs> yeah i agree um yeah yep uh anyway <laughs> so yeah. if you you investigate this place and then you find a child who's like staring at her doll and is fixated on it oh come on you can't you, gloss over the murder the murder scene's amazing <laughs> the tiny the the body with all the tiny stabs in it uh, tiny stabs in it throat slash but it's hung up by the bed sheets mm -hmm. so it's basically hanging from the ceiling as a marionette, marionette. uh which, as we'll shortly see, seems impossible, though very cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, the child will not interact with the PC, but she'll kind of mutter that the doll can walk and talk, and she'll not let you have the doll <clears throat> if you try and take it. Um, the truth of the matter is the girl's dad saw the puppet move and it decided to kill the puppet to protect the secret of... The whatever. puppet decided to kill the dad. Dad, to... yeah maintain it so, secret yeah so the the daughter i don't know the daughter knows that the doll killed no her dad but the doll did ask her to hide the murder weapon mm -hmm. so which the, is like under the bed sheet yeah so it's so not like, that hard to find <laughs> yeah so so the bloody knife is uh you know in the bedroom and if yeah. anybody tosses the room they'll find it uh which is super macabre i think and, and mm -hmm. kind of kind of neat but this is mostly designed to be a bit of a dead end right the pcs aren't expected to figure any of this out and they probably shouldn't be able to like i think this is mostly designed to be kind of a foreshadowing yeah, encounter I, you know i wouldn't like it wouldn't i don't think it'd be too difficult to be like oh maybe the puppet did it given circumstance right there's no indication that it's animated mm. in the scene but like you might infer and now that you've gotten you have tickets to the puppet show it might be okay well let's go check out the puppet show mm -hmm. but yeah maybe <clears throat> which it wouldn't be which i'd have no problem with right like but i don't think that they should be able like I'm, I'm not saying like force them not to but i don't know that they have any mechanisms as a second level pc to be able to 
realize that this is a living doll. It's not, it's not just an animated object, so mm-hmm. it's not going to show up on Detect Magic or whatever. It's a magical creature, not a magic item. Yeah. So barring them just randomly stabbing the doll, which doesn't feel pain, so maybe it would just pretend to be dead. Like I, I don't think they should be able to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess one thing to point out about the dolls, because I don't know if I'm going to remember to mention it later, is one of the main features of them is none of the dolls will hurt children. Yeah. Right? Like that's sort of a key thing in here. Though what did bug me, and this particularly may big, bug your players too, as the adventure goes on, is these little dolls don't have super superhuman strength. Mm-hmm. Right? They're just dolls. They're fairly weak. Their abilities lie in other avenues so so how did this doll string up an adult human you know sometimes it's better not to ask those questions and just go with it but yeah right but like if i was playing if i was a player because at a certain point you know if the cards fall the right way your players are going to end up being dolls and you're just like well obviously the dolls are strong enough to hang an adult human you know lift an adult human off of the ground so i should be strong enough to you know, do X or what mm-hmm, have you, mm-hmm. and that's not the case. Mm-hmm. So th- this is one of those situations where narratively cool, but it asks certain questions that there aren't any answers to. Like it's very much a rule of cool situation, not a actual possible mechanically situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, now... Theoretically, there's going to be some sort of NPC discussion encounters with the constable. You know, oh, okay, well, thanks for your help in doing nothing. Carry about your business. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, okay, we just saw a horrible murder. Let's go to the puppet show. Yep. And in my opinion, I don't know if it was the same for you, but there is no reason for the players to go... Like to be actually be at the puppet show, mm-hmm. other than for the players to see the puppet show. Because mm-hmm. as written, what happens? They go to the puppet show, they see the puppets, and then the kids are like, "Yay!" And the parents are like, "Ah oh, ha ha!" Kids are enjoying themselves, and then almost immediately, they get the players get called outside by the constable to be like, "Aha! I arrested somebody again. Thanks, buddy. Why are you telling us? We're not." We're just random people that you don't know, okay? Yep. Um, come interrogate come, them. Come interrogate them. All right, come with me. Let's leave. And then you go, and he's just arrested some random hobo that obviously didn't do it, and you're going to release him. But with the PCs now out of the way, even though the, the adventure put them in the way <laughs> in the first place, uh, the really instigating event of the adventure occurs is while the kids are watching the puppet show, a bunch of animated puppets kill their parents. Yeah, or slash possess them. Yeah, it, it doesn't... Because I was confused about that too, and I made some notes about that, because like it isn't really clear to me, but because at the end, they're all ghosts? Does that mean they're dead? Because that would be my interpretation of it, is to be a ghost, you kind of have to be dead. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it doesn't explicitly... St- it gets very it. muddled. Because then if that's the case, like when you become a puppet, why would they keep your body around, right? Like mm-hmm. if they didn't keep any of the adults around, why would they have kept yours around when you got possessed? It, it gets very confused between these original parents mm-hmm. and then like subsequent parents because there are possessed adults later on. Mm-hmm. And, and, like the, and, and shouldn't there be other possessed like Well, like the, main mo- the main motivation of... Uh, Maligno, who, Maligli, who, Maligno, Maligno, who renames right. himself Maligno, is that he's mad because he can't possess a, an adult, yeah. right? Like, that's why he keeps Giuseppe around. They keep making him dolls. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> he kills another adult that he tried to possess or something. He tried to possess Giuseppe, but he yeah. couldn't. Like you find out in his, yeah. his diary, diary or whatever. So that's a little blurry, I guess, whether it, or not the puppets possess or kill... The adults, but regardless, they're gone, and mm. it's just the kids. And now, at this point, you've transitioned into the realm of Ravenloft. Yeah, <clears> and, and <throat> I feel that that's you got to make sort of a really big point of that. I th- yeah, <clears throat> and I think like there's no, I don't know if there's any narrative that uh, I didn't, I skipped over the narrative boxes, mm. but was there a narrative that um, 
like has the transition from the you know real the, world the real world into the into Ravenloft. Because if there's not, there should be some sort of. Oh yeah, so there's some descriptive changes that yeah. should happen, like because it, it, this happens at night, yeah, and like dawn never comes again, mm-hmm. right? Moon never comes. You never see the moon out from like it's always cloudy. It's over overcast. There's fogs that roll in, and there's mist everywhere. If you try to leave town after this point, you just run into a wall of fog and basically pop back out where you started. Mm-hmm. So following this big murder spree in the theater. That whole town gets uh, turned into a domain of Ravenloft. And at that point, you're stuck there mm-hmm. with uh, Maligno being the master of the domain. So it never really gets into that aspect of the Ravenloft thing because he should be able to influence the domain a certain yeah. amount. Yeah, you know, I think like the you. more likely a series of events that probably would happen in a game would be that you get called out to interrogate the bum that lived in mm. the streets. You never return to the puppet theater to see uh, Maligno and Giuseppe talking and never have that first fight with the puppets. Mm. Um, you probably go back and sleep, you know, like a mist rolls in, you go to bed, you wake up the next day. It's still misty. It's still dark. Right. Mm. And then, cause I just don't see why as a party, you'd be like, well, okay, let's go back and watch the puppet show now. Yeah. And I, I felt similarly in that I, don't think the player should ever go there originally. What you could have is they're dealing with the crime scene and blah, 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 blah. And then somebody else comes and says there's something horrible has happened at the theater. And then you get caught up with that, you know, or he's busy with that crime scene. And, mm-hmm. you know, the constable's like, um, okay, what do you know? People are missing. Okay, it doesn't sound super serious. Then you can he sends the party in his stead, yeah, and then you can have that secondary encounter and have the fight with the puppets mm-hmm. and, and fit sort of back into the standard progression of the narrative at that point. But it definitely felt jarring to me to have the party go there just to leave immediately after. It's sloppy foreshadowing, especially when it happens like right away, yeah. Right. It's it's not like several days later or multiple thing, uh, you know, encounters later this occurs. It's like, no, you check this out. You leave to have a you know, non-combat encounter and then you're right back there again. Eh. Yeah. So any way that it happens, you're going to be stuck in the demi plane. Right. And mm-hmm. then for me, I think the most likely events would be you would not end up the puppet theater. And then the next thing is they've set a trap for the remaining adults or you, I guess, which is the toy shop is. Well, the, 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 the toy shop is the eventual trap, mm-hmm. right? Like that's, I would not rush to that encounter mm-hmm. because from this point on the adventure, basically there's a free form point, there's a fixed part, and then there's a free form part. And then there's the finale, mm-hmm. right? Like, so there's some freedom in there. So in between this uh, initial precipitating event and the potential um, toy shop encounter, the PCs basically have free ability to explore, figure out, and this is the point where things should not feel right anymore, where now there's this weird... Uh, feeling of menace in the air and you keep finding children wandering the streets by themselves or you know you hear children talking to somebody and then when you go to investigate they're by themselves right like you can really sort of play up that dread aspect Mm -hmm. Uh, also because in this time this if your players separate for any reason that's your opportunity to pick them off yeah um, yeah, so I think yeah, you're you, you're probably right because there's a big list of encounters that can happen in this period, right? So it's encounters. like yeah, I think the goal is to get people <clears throat> um, possessed at this point. Mm. Uh, um, I mean, one thing I didn't particularly care for is it's written that any PC that goes off by themselves is automatically possessed. Right? It's just assumed that they're overwhelmed and possessed by one of the dolls. And you don't even tell the player that that happened. Mm-hmm. You're just like, you didn't find anything. And then from that point on, anytime a PC goes off with the possessed, so if you're in a pair go off, that other person gets possessed. 
and then so on and so forth. And theoretically, you could just have all your players possessed passively. And for me, that didn't seem particularly satisfying. Mm -hmm. Like from a narrative standpoint, what, you know, I wouldn't force this to happen. But what I would like to happen is I would probably drive it with the freeform investigation until a point where at least one of the PCs gets possessed. And this might be something as simple as they sleep for the night. Yeah. Right. And then once you have at least one PC possessed, it can be two if you want, it doesn't really matter. That's when I would run the toy shop ambush. Mm -hmm. Because while I don't want to necessarily force the PCs to lose the ambush, I'd like to stack the cards in my favor. And if you have at least one or maybe two of your PCs possessed going into that fight, the likelihood of the remaining PCs of winning are, is basically nil. Yeah. Right. Even not possessed, I think there's 18 dolls there, and all they need to do is like land one stab with their silver needle for you to lose. Um, makes it very difficult to to win. Mm -hmm. But from an imagery standpoint, I, I like the idea of them going in, the ambush starting, and then you being able to like pass a note to one of your players where you reveal to them that you actually are not under the, you know, no longer have control of your part, your player, and you, you know, you don't attack the other PCs because this is the whole thing. The dolls aren't trying to kill them. I think like a cool um, like narrative reveal of this mm -hmm. whole thing would be like, because when you're caught, you end up in the toy store, I think, yeah, right? Like, yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> you're in the place where the trap is when you yeah. become dolls. Mm -hmm. So you could like start the encounter and you could be like, even just like everybody roll initiative. And like when the player who's possessed goes to roll initiative, you go like, oh, you don't need to, you're not with the party. And then everyone's like, what do you mean? It's like, Ryan, your eyes open and below you, you see, you know, mm -hmm. like, your party. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think that's cool. I don't know that I'd want to give it away in the fight mm -hmm. because from a, a narrative standpoint what i think is super would be super fun is you can basically narrate the end of the fight right dolls are jumping on you you're being pulled down by all of these dolls you know like the little puttins against you know from gulliver's travels and you feel a stab of pain uh, in your neck and then you sort of just have a fade to black scene mm -hmm. and then you have the fade from black and then you're, you know, you're looking down at yourselves, yeah, getting back up, uh -huh, yeah. you know, following the, the encounter and you're in the cage mm -hmm. and then go from there. Because I, I felt that it was one of the, the coolest uh, scenes in the whole thing is the PCs waking up in a cage, being a little disoriented, looking out of the cage and seeing themselves mm. and then rolling a horror check yeah. <laughs> right? then suddenly screaming or passing out and, yeah. and what have you. Uh, and I thought that was one of the best payoffs in the entire adventure. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of want to include that if possible. Yeah. Now that being said, it, it's not expected for them to lose, right? Like it's encouraged, you know, it's stacked against them. Yeah. But if you, you know, manage to fight them off you can still finish the adventure just fun fine but like i feel that if you're running this adventure and your pcs don't end up dolls there's better adventures to run yeah because <laughs> yeah. because really this is this is the the, the key part of yeah. the, the adventure yeah being the dolls is what i think makes the fun in this um, oh, yeah it's the memorable part this yeah. is the part that everyone's going to remember yeah and like i think once your dolls and i mean this goes back to your like well how strong are the dolls like one of the um mentioned ways to escape these bird cages is to like string together enough rope to lower a cage threads. you pull threads yeah, off to of like, their bodies yeah, yeah. To like lower a cage to the ground and this just seemed absurd to me you know like it would just never happen well this this whole <laughs> part once they're dolls becomes skill-based problem solving mm -hmm. they completely lack the ability to actually be combat effective mm -hmm. right they don't have weapons they don't have any of their special abilities so wizards and sorcerers and etc do not have spell slots you are a puppet yeah right you're a little marionette and you have to figure out how to regain your body without the usual tool sets mm -hmm. that you have as your standard pc so this, I could see potentially being very frustrating to certain players because we took away 
all your toys. Like it's yeah. a completely different game, game at this point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you're some players may not appreciate this, but I personally feel this is the whole point of the adventure. Yeah, like as a Halloween one shot one off or something like that. This is fun. And <clears throat> and the thing that I liked about being the dolls is like you can run into a cat, the Toy Store cat, right? Gato, which is cat in Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he can like rip you up and stuff, but you can never die as a puppet. You can always be repaired. So if mm. you find like tape and thread and needle, you could like stuff your buddies back together and yeah. and keep going. Well, um, well, I did like the fact that like the cat is pretty much the only deadly encounter yeah. <laughs> from here on out because the Toy Store is full of animated toys. Because Maligno has the ability to animate toys. Mm -hmm. So there's animated airplanes and hobby horses and so on and so forth that are there basically as obstacles to the PCs getting out of the toy store. Yeah. Right? Because I think they're, I have to, can't remember specific, but I think the instructions are for the toys to stop the puppets or the PCs from leaving the, the store, but that's basically it. Yeah. So exploring the toy shop and what have you is totally fine. They've also been instructed not to kill, you know, destroy the puppets. Yeah. Right. So they'll, you know, grapple and, and restrict and tie up and what have you, but they won't actively try to destroy the PCs. The cat, on the other hand, has not been briefed on these instructions. <laughs> and and anything, still remains a cat. <laughs> anything that moves will, uh, will, you know, it'll go for and rip to pieces. I would just, like it would just be funny. It's like the cat grabs you and strangles your neck while it rakes your its legs across your tummy. Um, <clears throat> Shred damage. Yeah, so I guess at this point, if you escape, you maybe hopefully have clued in that the silver needles were some part to play. Didn't, I don't know if you would ever figure yeah, that you, out. Like, it's in Geppetto's yeah. notes. So basically at this point, it's, it's a bunch of problem solving. His name's Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Geppetto. Geppetto, sorry. <laughs> Giuseppe. Um, so the, P, the, the the goal before leaving here is to gain some information about the situation. And it's right in the main toy shop. There's Giuseppe's workbench. Mm -hmm. And on his workbench, he's got his notes. And then there's a handout you give the PCs. And in there, you find out about how the dolls possess people. It involves stabbing them in the neck with a silver needle. So you can find that information out in the actual uh, adventure itself, as well just from experience, because all of the carionettes, as they're called, boo hiss, um, carry these silver needles, so the PCs would have seen them. And you and would have been stabbed in You would have been stabbed with one, yeah. That you were so, possessed in. Mm -hmm. But on top of like that, it's actually explicitly written down mm -hmm. that that's how it works. So there you go. In case you didn't pick it up, it was written down for you. Like so, in all the adventures. Yeah. So getting out of the toy shop is not easy, right? And this is where the, the strength aspect gets into it because to break a window, it takes three puppets to smash it at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, apparently getting up through the chimney is a possibility because right. the puppets don't see the chimney as an exit mm -hmm. or the puppets, the other animated toys, so they won't try to stop you from trying to leave. So this whole bit is basically let your players try to problem solve and figure yeah. things out and, and, and whatnot and have fun with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you're out as a toy, basically, again, this is hugely free form. Yep. Right? You are small little puppets in a dangerous world trying to get your bodies back. And how you go about that completely up to you the location of the bodies are random they're possessed right so you just basically roll on a table to find out where the different pcs physical bodies are mm -hmm. and then uh, i think the only thing is they're not together mm -hmm. so it makes it a little easier to get back but the players need to go find silver needles so they need to find a silversmith shop yep. in which they can find the needles mm -hmm. and then they need to figure out ways of getting to their bodies and then stabbing them in the neck with a needle. And there's really no instructions whatsoever <laughs> on how to accomplish that. Yeah. So this is where your DMing skills need to come and play because it's all going to be adjudication on the fly and your players are going to be coming up with crazy ideas. Okay, can I take some thread and then tie it to the rafter and then 
you know, bungee <laughs> jump off of it and then stab me in the neck <laughs> as I, you know, jump down. And as, you know, as the DM, you're like, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 that sounds good. <laughs> well, let's, let's make a, some sort of check. Which, that yeah, seems like make a, a dexterity check to see how well you tied the knots when uh, you're falling. Right, you, you know, you, your string snaps halfway and you right. fall harmlessly to the ground. Because, because none of this is combat encounters, right? Yeah. You can't actually fight. Um, and what I did like... Uh, in both cases, like while you're before you're puppeted and after you're puppeted, there's lots of really fun little mm-hmm. random encounters in in there. And when you're a puppet, one of them is local dogs find you mm-hmm. and they come and attack anything that moves. So if you try to run, you get chased down by the dogs. Yeah. But to escape them, all you have to do is play dead. Yeah. So they, they, they sniff shake, you. And, they sniff yeah. you. They're just like, eh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then they carry off. And I just, for whatever reason, that really just stuck in my mind. I'm like, that is... That's a beautiful, nice little encounter with an elegant solution yeah, just to success. Just, yeah. I'd lie down and pretend to be a doll. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's all. And I forgot to mention earlier, but I really liked a lot of the encounters when you're still human beforehand because mm-hmm. it gave off a real gremlins feel to me, mm-hmm. like small little puppets jumping out of the sewer grate and little, like it's just the little small creatures trying to grab you and, you know, popping out of everywhere. Yeah, and I think that's sort of where, like, the beginning and the it hanging the human up and, like, because if you're, like, the puppets attack and you're, like, I kick the puppets and you're, like, yeah, they launch, like, 20 yards away, you know, huh. like, it, it sort of should, I think, feel like you're fighting puppets, you know, mm. that they're not stronger than you, you know, like, you're just swatting away hordes yeah. of puppets, but... Mm. Um, yeah, that's fun. I like that. Like they're the puppets are sort of they played them real, right? Like yeah. it's like you are a puppet. You know, you have no strength. You're just like this light little thing rolling mm-hmm. around. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and, <clears throat> and I think something could be said for having some of those encounters when you're still in your body and just let your players just dominate them, mm-hmm. right? Like. Okay, I just crush one of them with my boot, and you're like, okay, yeah, make a roll. I rip one in half. Oh, sure, like, absolutely, puppet. right? Because then when they're puppets, they're like, <gasps> yeah, okay. Remember yeah. that time I crushed one with my boot? Mm-hmm. I could now be crushed with a boot, right? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I, I think that would reinforce the the sense of danger if you mm-hmm. run it that way. Or you could like see a dog rip a running uh, puppet away boy. earlier, so then they could be like, well, I saw that one run, I play mm-hmm. dead. And then it's like, he comes up and sniffs you and walks away. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I think that first half of it, you could really foreshadow mm-hmm. the second half. And, and I think you get a better payoff if you've had some encounters. Yeah. So that, that, that ties into sort of like the, the delaying the uh, toy shop ambush until some of this stuff has is, is mm-hmm, happened mm-hmm. Uh, would in, you know, give you a better payoff later on. True, yeah. Right, so uh, there's nothing really to say here other than your players somehow over the course of potentially multiple days <laughs> need to get their bodies back. Yeah. Right, and once you're a human again, uh, you can pretty much pretend to still be possessed. So once, like the first one's going to be the hardest one. Mm-hmm, After mm-hmm. that, it makes your life a little easier because it sort of explicitly points out that the PCs can't really fake out the other carrionettes. Like they're fairly easily sniffed out. But pretending to be a possessed adult, they have a much higher success of, of, of yeah. faking it. And then basically in, until uh, you get all your bodies back, Nothing really happens, mm-hmm. right? You can just run some minor encounters and random encounters and whatnot. But the adventure is kind of on pause until everyone gets their bodies back. Mm-hmm. Presumably, everybody wants to get their bodies back. But yeah, and then once your bodies are, once you have your bodies, if you end up back at the puppet show, this is where you see Maligno giving a show to the children. Well, there's there's enough information in uh, Giuseppe's notebook to really point out that Maligno is. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the original, big the yeah. big scary one. So the the PCs should, at that point, understand that, like, this is the person we need to take out. They may also want to take out Giuseppe because he's the person that is responsible for this whole thing. But he's just a crazy old man. So yeah, it depends how awful uh, or, you know, neutral, we'll say. Your, your party is. Yeah, I guess if you want to prevent um, this from happening again, you have to take out Yeah, Giuseppe take out Giuseppe. Well. Yeah. Uh, but basically, Maligno's found giving uh, puppet shows, mm-hmm. you know, sh- a show on for the kids. And one thing I did like about this is the PCs could kick down the door and just start 
fighting, mm -hmm. but that would be bad because there's children there who could be potential, you know, uh, victims. Victims. But the puppets, the right? puppets won't intentionally hurt the children, mm. but they have no problem using them as shields. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I did like that this, if the PCs try to start a fight when there's a bunch of kids around, then this results in a powers check, which basically, you know, the powers of your gods are like, no, you did something super evil. We're going to either stop you from doing this or curse you or something along those mm -hmm. lines. And again, I kind of enjoyed that aspect of Ravenloft that like there's consequences to your actions. Right. And if you do something super evil, there's a bad thing that happens. You do something super good. There's like a physical response to that in, in the game. Yeah. Right. Um, so if you try to, you know, start a giant murderous fight in the uh, theater full of small children, not so good. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is that the PCs should wait until the show's over, the kids will leave, and then it's a fight. And once the fight starts, the adventure is basically over. The PCs can't lose from this point. Yeah, if you, you know, if you overpower Maligno, he'll attempt to run, but the ghosts of the adults that he has wronged will close the doors and say, they'll eventually start chanting, burn him, burn him, burn him. Yeah, they tell, so in case you, exactly in case you haven't figured it out by now, you're supposed to light the puppet uh, theater on fire. And, yeah. and once you do that, it's sort of game over. You know, you just leave and light it on fire. And they'll, they'll, the ghosts will allow you to leave, but they yeah. won't allow Maligno to leave. And you burn it down and you destroyed the demi plane i presume and you free of the missing yeah it's a, it's a little uh mm -hmm. vague in there i mean basically with maligno defeated the pcs can leave but i'm not sure if the domain ever is over mm -hmm. right this is where like my remembering about ravenloft domains gets a little fuzzy because I, I seem to remember things like well, the domains themselves protect their masters so is Maligno actually dead? Will he just get be built again by Giuseppe, right? Because the, the evil powers of the demiplane want this place to exist. Like, I'm not sure that a demiplane, a, a domain ever gets to go back, right? Without the uh, master actively around, nothing stops people from leaving it. But I don't think the town ever can become part of the real world again. It just means people can leave. Mm. And the PCs can leave. So from here on out, I don't know. Do you try to organize an exodus of everybody back to, you know, the happy hunting grounds or what have you? Or are people just going to stay? I don't know. It's There's a lot of orphan children yeah. that need to be dealt with. Also, some stuff gets a little wonky in that there's other possessed uh, adults, right? And it says that once Maligno dies, all the other carionettes die, right? So are all those possessed adults now dead too? Are there a bunch of other dolls with the adults in them? Right, because that's the whole thing. Is like if there's other possessed adults, mm -hmm. are there other possessed dolls? Mm -hmm. So should the PCs be trying to save those other possessed adults before they kill Maligno? Because otherwise they're just going to die. Like the, the actual magic mechanics behind this like it would be kind of fun to find like a puppet refugee camp when you're exploring around, you know, and it's mm. like the adults are hiding beneath the theater as puppets. <laughs> well, well, that's kind of it. It, it. it poses some interesting role playing conundrums, right? So if the carionettes are all dead, do the possessed bodies die? If the possessed body died, do the remaining adults still survive as possessed dolls or do they die too? Right? Because all of that has some moral implications to your players and as written it's not explained at all going yeah. into it as a dm you should probably have an answer to this question yeah because as a player i'd be like okay i'd realize that like okay these are possessed adults so are there other dolls and as a dm i should have an answer to that because mm -hmm. there's maybe players that are like well we need to save the other adults too mm -hmm. true because that could that should be part of the rescue operation or what ends up happening is there's basically no adults left anymore there's a bunch of kids and then a few adults that might have survived yeah which creates sort of a another moral problem and like what do you do with all these kids because as written you're just sort of like we save the day and we leave you know and there's like hundreds of orphan children <laughs> yeah you know figure it out for yourself kids good luck see ya 
The <laughs> other thing I was curious about, because it doesn't really get into it, is it says that the puppets don't harm children. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's the age designation there? You know, uh, like under 10? 18 and up is no longer a child at the a children's the, the, hospital. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the, so yeah. as long as you're a teenager? Yeah. And then, and then if this society persisted on your 18th birthday, that it's like you get possessed? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Because reading that, I was thinking about how interesting it would be to have an adventure sort of set in this domain, but like years later. Mm-hmm. Because that would be sort of a thing. Like what happens if as all the kids are getting older because there's no new kids coming in mm -hmm. and the ramifications of that. Or I guess it is Raven let off. So maybe time doesn't pass in this right. and your kids forever type right. of thing. Yeah. It's, you, know, don't, it's you, know, you know, a domain outside of time. Yeah. It's the same night over and over again type mm -hmm. of thing. So. I mean, that's a nice thing about Ravenloft is you do have a fair bit of control over that craziness. But you start to think too closely on certain magical effects. It starts to break down yeah, a little bit yeah. uh, at the edges. But really, this adventure is about becoming a puppet and trying to do problem solving. As a puppet, that. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I would say the only thing I kind of wish was better outlined is maybe more explicit skill encounters mm -hmm. uh, during this time. Part of it is it's a second edition and skills weren't quite as well developed in, in second edition. It was a lot more freeform in terms of rolling. Um, but if I was going to update this, I'd probably create more mm. specific details around that because mm -hmm. you're, you're a puppet. There's a lot of fun things you could do with it. Like I would love if like you did retain your spell casting ability, but you're like, can I cast Fireball? And you're like, oh yeah, for sure. And you're like, all right, I cast Fireball. And you're like, about a candle-sized flame floats out from mm. your your puppet hand, and it just mm. singes the edge of the like yeah. table. Yeah, I think that, that that could be fun, or just other encounters like, you know, you got shiny button eyes, mm. and a raven suddenly mm. sees the glint of it, and it's just trying to take Peck your, your eyes, yeah. right? Like, because it's shiny and it wants your your eyes. Like, cause that's the one thing I, I kind of wish they'd had is. Something with a bird because mm -hmm. you're small and you can get picked up and, and flown off and maybe have the stuffing pulled out of you, you know, yeah. like to, to build a nest. So I, I think there could have been more fun, fun things that are explicit to being small. Mm -hmm. You wake up at a child's tea party. Yeah. You try and escape well, and that, she picks you up and puts you back in the chair. Exactly. Yeah. Like you just be walking through the street and you just get grabbed by a kid yeah. who decides to play with you. Yeah. And you're like, put me down. They're like, no, we're going to be friends forever. Right? Like, yeah. like that type of thing would be fun. So I, I think really leaning into the you're a puppet aspect. Or having to use the children to get your bodies back. Because yeah. Because like in the very yeah. beginning, like the girl was so convinced that above her doll right like mm -hmm. her conviction is with the doll so maybe presumably as dolls you could convince the children that they could help you right and you know that's another avenue that could be taken no it's a it's a really good idea i didn't even think about that but yeah, yeah that'd be the most obvious obvious thing because even though they're possessing the adults they're still carrionettes and they will not harm the children so if the pcs can sort of figure out that that'd be the easiest way to try to get their bodies back is to use the kids and a lot of, you know, diplomacy checks and what yeah. have you to get them to help you out. Because they're still kids. Nothing's changed with the kids. Yeah, yeah. They're just, right? So, yeah, yeah you're probably convincible. Mm. Hmm. Oh, I like that. That's the fun of D&D. &D, all these mm. clever <laughs> <laughs> solutions that you just kind of think of on the fly once well, you start talking about Well, what's the nice thing things. about this adventure is that it, there is a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. in how it plays out and how the PCs get to resolve the complications, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and there's pros and cons to that, right? Like it requires a little bit more thinking on your feet and improvisation compared to some of the other ones we've done because yeah. there's these two big sort of loose freeform sections. Mm -hmm. There's like, a yeah, there's events that need to be hit in this adventure mm -hmm. and everything else is just sort of have fun. Yeah, there's, there's the initiating one, freeform section, ambush, freeform, freeform. section, and then, you know, conclusion mm -hmm. encounter. Uh, so it's a good combination of, of both, but I think you could either have a lot of fun with this or be really frustrated because some people don't do well when they have to be proactive. Yeah. Right. And it really is a proactive thing. You can say, like, you're a doll now. What do you want to do? 
uh, and you get a sort of choice paralysis and, yeah. and problems like that. With the right group, I think this would be one of the most fun adventures ever. And especially as like a, a Halloween theme yeah. adventure, it's it's pretty pretty great. As it is a little weird, maybe for certain campaigns. Yeah, yeah. I don't have much else to say on it. I think that if you were a DM and you wanted to maybe practice doing things on the fly, like this mm. is a good one because there's events that you can trigger that can move the story along, and and a lot that you can kind of just make up on the spot if mm. you want to. Um, I think that's a skill lots of people want to have, but maybe don't necessarily have. It's an intermediate challenge yeah. in terms of DMing. Yeah. It's, it's not completely telegraphed for you. Yeah, no, I, I liked it a lot. I uh, I could see having a lot of fun with this. And yeah, I don't really have anything else to add. Um, yeah, me neither. As always, thanks for listening, guys. You can email us at theimpinogre at gmail.com or on the Twitters at theimpinogre. Uh, next week we're tackling what does it see over there it is return to white plume oh, mountain yeah, that's right so stay tuned for that and as always thanks for listening All right, thanks <laughs>